Hi, I'm Greg from RV Haulers. It's been nine years since I saw this RV hauler in the yard. Would you like to see what one looks like or can look like after nine years of being an RV hauler? Join me in this video. I'd like to show you Fisher. Hi Fisher, I missed you. Yeah, Wayne and Donna initially purchased Fisher and I singled this RV hauler nine years ago. Since then, Dominic and Noreen purchased Fisher. That was six years ago. And now Fisher's back in my yard. And the reason I'm making this video is I wanna show you what, how these RV haulers last and what they can look like when they're being remarketed for sale. So I'm honored that Dominic and Noreen brought Fisher back to my yard so that I could recertify him, go from front to back, from top to bottom, and get him ready for a new owner. And I've got, you know, I've got some parts that I'm gonna show you what we did. I've got a list of all the things that we'd, we've repaired, right? There's always some little nigglies that you'll find in any every hauler that's been, you know, away from my clutches for the last nine years. So I'm gonna show you what we did and oh, what a beautiful truck this still is. Let's go do that. So a few little details about Fisher. Fisher is obviously a Volvo Model 780, so it's the largest, most luxurious sleeper. He's set up for a smart car. Um, he's got about 542,000 miles on him. He's got the D. 12 engine in him so he's a pre-emissions truck which is really cool to find and boy it's nice this has got the eaton fuller automated transmission so there's no clutch on the floor you just hit a button puts it into drive and away you go now what i'm going to do is down below if you want to see some of the original videos of when we converted this rv hauler the cool generator systems that are in here um, the lighting, the sheepskin seat covers, the custom flooring, all that stuff. I'm going to have, and even the delivery to Florida. Uh, I'm going to have all those videos down below. So you can click on them and you can go through all the past history. But what we've done is we've gone through Fisher and we've done things to what I call my RV hauler standards. Here we go. Mechanically, we've gone through Fisher and we've really given ourselves peace of mind uh, that he is all right up to snuff mechanically. When uh, an RV hauler comes back for remarketing here at RV Haulers, we do our own mechanical inspection and I'm proud to say we inspect things to a much higher level of scrutiny than perhaps a commercial inspection would be, right? We're using these RV haulers as motorhomes not as commercial trucks. So we have higher standards. Uh, it's gotta be safe and reliable and last a long while. Obviously they sure do, take a look at this. And they have to perform well too. And after we went through this truck, we found some steering components. I'll show you in a moment. We found some fuel system. Uh, there was an, a fuel air leak that we fixed. I'll show you that part. But when we're all done, the nice thing is I actually take it to a federal government inspector and what they do is they do a very formal four page inspection of the, the Volvo and they go through it for all the things commercially that a tractor has to meet. So the braking and the air systems and the transmission and the lighting and the steering and all of that stuff. And the key thing is it all passes, right? And my new customers, they get a copy of this. So we've got peace of mind that another set of eyes have gone through the truck. And the other part of the due diligence that I'm proud to do is we pull oil samples and we do um, oil analysis of the engine, the transmission and the rear end. And again, everything came out perfect. Let me talk about oil sample analysis. The oil sample analysis is like a window into the soul. So what we do is through the dipstick, we actually siphon, we'll, we'll idle the engine, get all the oil stirred up. And after we shut it down through the dipstick hose, we'll siphon the oil out and we take it to a lab for analysis. And what's great is, you know, we can inspect things mechanically and we can drive, but by having that, oh, those oil analysis, lab analysis done, we're able to see if there's any metal 
uh, that is in that oil. Even the minute, part not particles, but really indications. So uh, we'll, we'll identify to the lab, you know, this was a Volvo D12 engine that we took this oil sample from. They know all the components in there and they'll look at, you know, whether there's wear on the crank or the cylinders or, you know, if it has to, if we've analyzed the transmission, they'll be looking for uh, gear wear as well as in the rear end. Uh, <clears throat> and that'll let us know whether there's anything mechanically that we can't physically see, but that's lurking inside. And of course, in this case, it's perfect. Mechanically, let me show you some of the things that we found. So when going through the steering components, we found that some of the steering ball joints were really uh, starting to show their age. And there you go, right? You can see how the, uh, the ball joints, these are really reluctant to move. They're super stiff. So we actually had a drag, this is the drag link. We had some other ball joints as well that were showing some wear. So we replaced all of those. And of course, anytime you replace steering components, you have to make sure that you do a wheel alignment. So you can see that things were a little bit out of spec. Some of these red numbers were out of spec. But then of course, after we're all done, everything is put right into its specified ranges where, where it should be. You know, while we're here looking at pieces of paper, here is the oil analysis that was done. So we pulled it on February 27th. It was analyzed on the 28th. This is engine oil. We know how many kilometers or, or miles, pardon me, were on the vehicle. And you can see that in the spectral analysis, they'll look into some of these metals that are in there. They'll look at fuel dilution as well to see if any fuel was in that oil, of course, and water. And here's the key thing, right? Condition normal. Nothing needs to be done. That's the, uh, the engine. Then <clears throat> here is the transmission oil, everything within spec. And what's nice is um, they actually give you just some, you know, if we were to look at these numbers, you and I would say, oh, I don't know what that really means. The key is this lab does the analysis for us and tells us whether we need to do anything, even if the oil needs to be changed. So that was the transmission and there is the rear end, there's the gear oil, again, normal. Here's another mechanical thing that we found. This is the uh, torque arm. So this is on the rear axle. So when the axle goes up and down, this ensures that the, uh, the, the axle has the proper motion in a vertical range. And you can, this is really hard to see uh, when you have a bed on the back of the truck, but you can see that this got really corroded. Um, you can see actually some rust down in there. So this torque arm was not sealed and operating the way that it should. We replaced it. Another mechanical thing that was located was we pulled the wheels, right? We, we pulled the drums. We're looking at the brakes. We're really getting into some of the hidden things. And we found one of the rear wheel seals was starting to sweat. So this is common with these trucks that sometimes when they sit for a little bit of time, you know, you've gotten to your destination, the wheels aren't turning. Sometimes those wheel seals will dry a little bit. That oil hasn't been splashing around in the rear diff. So when it's, it, it, it dries out a little bit, some of the oil will seep out. And of course, with time, that oil will migrate towards the brakes. So we don't want that to happen. Put new wheel seals in the rear end. You know, there's other little things. Like when I said we're looking top to bottom, you see that mirror that, or window that's way up there? One of those hinges, when we opened the window to test it, um, we found that it, the, the pins that were in the back of the window hinge were broken. So the hinges were actually back ordered, but we used some stainless bolts and we repaired it. I don't know if you can see it way up there, but that rearmost hinge got fixed. So we look at things aesthetically as well. So those are some of the mechanical things that we did to Fisher. Let's close this hood. And Fisher is right now titled as a motorhome in Florida. And we found that the sun had been hitting that headlight for quite some time. And this one, you know, it got that yellowing that you sometimes see on the headlights over a long period of time. It's been nine years. So it didn't look really good. So we 
replaced the headlight with one that matched the passenger side. Now everything really pops and looks good. What we've also done to Fisher, oh, I'm proud of this, is we refinished this bed. Being in the uh, kind of a, the, the Florida weather near the coast, the humid um, salt air, there was some rust on Fisher's bed. I, I didn't originally build this bed. Um, Wayne and Donna, when they first bought Fisher, they built the bed themselves. Um, but we started to see some rust on this bed and you know what? I think it, Fisher is such a beautiful truck, it warranted getting recoated. So what we chose to do here is we sandblasted this bed down to bare, bare metal, high build primer, and we then applied bed liner. And so that's that rubberized coating that you put in like truck boxes. And we also take the added step that after we apply the bed liner, we put a high gloss commercial paint. When the bed liner is still open or porous, you know, it hasn't cured fully, we apply this high gloss paint. And what's nice about it is it washes beautifully. Now, what we also did, just something that we designed together, is we thought we wanted to bring the black from the bed forward onto the truck a little bit. So we applied that same uh, exact same paint on the front of uh, or towards the front of Fisher and we did one up top as well. That's actually a decal. So oh, he's got new tires, he's got new hubcaps, the inside is still pristine and he's ready for a smart car. So everything you need for a smart car, we've made sure that it's there. So whether it's one of the little bit older models or a new model, we the width fits on here. So the, the only thing that we can fit up there is a smart car. So if you're thinking about a Jeep or an SUV or a side-by-side, -side, this RV hauler is set up to load something width-wise only. Um, it has a nice drawn box. We've got all kinds of additional lighting up there. And also check out down below in the links, the generator system that's on Fisher. That's what's really cool, is this is a fully off-grid boondocking ready RV hauler. So it's got a diesel generator, an APU or auxiliary power unit built right in, pulls from the diesel fuel tanks. It provides 30 amps of power to your trailer. It's all been really recently serviced and gone through. So it also provides air conditioning to the sleeper without idling the engine. What's nice about that is this can kind of be, you know, you can set up home base with your fifth wheel, you can drop it somewhere, and then you can take the RV hauler like a mini motorhome, right? I'll take you for a tour inside um, and show you some of the cool things that we've done in there in just a moment. How am I doing? You know, I have a favor to ask. If you have content you would like to see in my videos, I'm making these videos for you. So please help guide what you want to see. If you have questions or if you like other content covered, I need to know because I want to make them of interest to you. So please comment down below. Give me your questions. And of course, we're a little small company, right? We're niche. So when you do take a moment to give us a like or subscribe, it really helps other people find our videos. Thank you. Oh wait, I forgot to tell you something else. We've got uh, Joshua and Dallin here today. Uh, <clears throat> and what I wanna show you is something else that we found while we were going through Fisher. So what we found was, you know, I've had the pleasure of probably turning the key on the hundreds of Volvos over the last 13 years. And I know what they should sound like and feel like and uh, dare I say even smell like. And Fisher, I found, took a little bit too long to turn over and crank. And, you know, it didn't quite sit right with me. It, it, you know, it would crank a little bit longer than normal. So I knew that there was something going on with the fuel system and actually I couldn't find it. So we engaged our Volvo friends right here at the dealership. We've been working with them for 13 years and they treat me really well. 
and they came and actually did an on-site inspection of Fisher and they found one fuel line hose that was slowly allowing the prime to be lost. So we solved that, but it still didn't quite crank over quite right. And Volvo with their wizardry found that there was a housing on the side of the engine that was allowing some of the air or some of the fuel, it, it wasn't dripping, it wasn't leaking or anything, but it was losing prime. A bit of air was getting into the fuel system. It was taking long, longer than we would have liked for it to crank over. I don't have the old one, but this is kind of the housing that was sitting on the side of the engine and this is what we repaired and now it turns over beautifully. Okay, other little minutiae. Ah, that's all I do is make long videos. I'm sorry, folks. If you want fast videos, maybe tell me. Let me know. <laughs> but something else that we do is we hit every single switch. We test out every single thing on these trucks. Um, you know, another way of putting it, I like it when things go wrong for me. I don't want them to go wrong for my customers. I like to find the stuff. So we try it all out. We're test driving it. We're pulling trailers. And you know what I found was we were trying to winch the smart car on and it, it seemed like the winch was really weak. And what I found was inside here, inside this junction box, there was a relay where a wire was loose. And actually the relay um, was kind of failed inside. So we found the replacement relay, put it in. Now she works beautifully. So there's the winch system for pulling the smart car up onto the bed. Before I go inside, let's just take a minute and look at Fisher. So Uniroyal steers, beautiful tires. Like you, you can actually see it's still got some of the, see the little rubber nubs? You still got them on the tires. You can see how new they are. So beautiful tires, of course, brand new wheel alignment. So we're protecting those. The drive tires are new as well. <clears throat> nice closed pattern. So they're very fuel efficient tire, quite quiet as well on the road I found. There you go. I'll just give you a slow external view. Oh, there's Ranger. Hi, Ranger. Oh, and there's Shadow. And yet we got to do it. Oh, I can't resist. We got to look at rock chips. We have to. We have to. All right, so I'm going to show you things. I always like to show you things that are not perfect. So, you know, you're, you're, you get a good benchmark for what the reality is. You can see some of the um, clear coat has started to come away. So just some of the you know, little rocks, they didn't, rocks didn't get through to the paint, but they did get through the clear coat. You can see that some of that is coming away. But you know what? Like try to find a rock chip. You don't. It's nice. Beautiful grill. Oh, I'm in the way. So over here, I've got a few little rock chips, right? Not many. There's another one down there. But beautiful paint, really. Very nice. Okay, let's go inside. So these are the rotating seats. Always look for this handle, right? This handle lets you know that the seats rotate and face rearward. What I did years ago was I rebuilt the foam in these seats and they're still perfect, right? This hasn't seen commercial use since I uh, upgraded this RV hauler. So the seats are absolutely rebuilt with new foam. And what we did here, this is genuine sheepskin. I had these custom made in California, even including the armrests, and they're still beautiful. This is, they're like sitting in the lap of an angel. They're absolutely gorgeous. So I got my shoes off because Fisher deserves it. But if you look at even the steering wheel, there's no wear, right? You can still see all the little stipple in the steering wheel. The plastics are pristine. 
Got an upgraded Panasonic, a, more, a much more modern stereo. There's the hitch camera. We've got all kinds of power distribution, both on the dash as well as up here in the upper above the visor here. <clears throat> so CB radio, and this is a switched power system. So these outlets come on, they're perfect for, you know, tire pressure monitoring or a dash camera. So you don't have wires hanging all over the place. But here's a great example of what an RV hauler should look like after nine years. The flooring still looks awesome. So what we did here is we flattened the floor, we took the carpet out originally, and we put in this um, hard surface flooring. So this paneling, we went with the gray so that it matched the interior. I rebuilt these foam cushions as well, made new covers for them. So they're fresh. Uh, this is a non-smoking truck, of course, so smells clean. There we go, camera adjusted to the back wall. So the table and benches, this table goes down and the benches, this all flattens out and becomes a bed. We've got a flat panel TV on a rotating arm, DVD player down below. The usual refrigerator, freezer, and here is the control for the air conditioning, APU, and heat system by Carrier. So thanks again to Dominic and Noreen for trusting me um, to bring Fisher right back up to uh, his original condition and ready for a new owner. I love seeing my babies come back here to the yard. Thanks for watching this video. Thanks for your interest in what an RV hauler can look like after, well, nine years. I think it's pretty awesome. I'm Greg from RV Haulers. Thanks for watching this video. Do check out all the past videos on Fisher down below. And uh, here's maybe some others here on the screen that'll come up that might be of interest to you. Thanks for watching.